and this is to be given by Saksham Sharma, who is at the department, a PhD student in the <clears throat> Department of Chemical Engineering and Biotechnology here in the University of Cambridge. Um, Saksham's main focus is, um, well, applied mathematics in the fluid mechanics context. His uh, skills encompass droplet dynamics, microfluidics, soft lithography, experimental and theoretical thin film dynamics. And in addition to all that, Sakshan is a poet. I don't know if we're going to hear any of his poetry this afternoon, that would be nice. But um, anyway, over to Sakshan, whose title is on a toroidal method to solve the sessile drop oscillation problem. Mm, thanks, Moffat, for the introduction. It was a lovely introduction. And thanks, Paul, uh, and everyone else for uh, organizing this conference. Um, uh, it was supposed to happen, I think, 2019, but got postponed, but still, I'm um, too excited to share uh, my work. I will try to share my presentation. Uh, can you see my presentation, please? Yes, I can see it. It's fine. Oh, nice. Okay. So this is the work that I uh, did as part of my PhD uh, in first and second year. I'm right now in my third year towards the end of my PhD. Uh, and it's on um, a classical problem, basically, on a toroidal method, a method that I use to solve the oscillation problem of SSI drop, which is placed on uh, a surface. Uh, so if you can see with the pointer. So this uh, work was uploaded last year on archive and recently got accepted in JFM. So please feel free to have a look at the paper when it is out. Okay, so starting with the problem, the problem is very simple. Uh, we have uh, a droplet placed on a surface, as you can see, uh, thanks to the video, uh, placed on a surface. And as the surface oscillates uh, normally upwards, then the drop oscillates as well. The whole target of the project was to find a mathematical expression for the frequency of the drop and how it uh, relates with the contact angle theta c. Uh, talking about uh, the notation that I use, I use lambda, which is dimension as frequency, uh, and KNL uh, refers to the front mode and the top mode that you see. So front mode is uh, seen from the front camera and it's basically uh, uh, number of nodes or number of the intersections of the uh, uh, intersections of the disturbed interface with the initial equilibrium of the droplet shape and how much time it intersects. So here you think intersects two times to k is two. Uh, same goes for the top uh, azimuthal mode. As you can see, there are five local maxima shown by the uh, global maxima shown by the droplet. So L is five. Here. Now going to the second slide, uh, Talking about a brief history of the problem, uh, uh, it started with the seminal work of Rayleigh in which he derived in his appendix of the paper the analytical expression for the frequency of a spherical drop free in uh, space. Uh, and when uh, one perturbs it mathematically, then one uses the genre polynomial of this kind uh, uh, to find the frequencies. Just to mention how the genre polynomial are like, so P5 means k is five here, the mode is fifth here, which means it has five zeros uh, on the uh, y, on the x-axis. And uh, later on, um, probably there were a lot of works in before, but just a brief summary. So Lem, he introduced uh, azimuthal modes by incorporating Legendre functions with the, uh, no, uh, with the, uh, uh, with the azimuthal modes into the, into the analysis. And later on, from the shaker, he incorporated this cost K2 uh, uh, explain damping in the situation. Now, talking about the modern era, it starts with, uh, I, I feel like, uh, with the work of Sanyan Sebeta, uh, uh, for example, in which he uh, uh, found expression for oscillation of a sessile drop on a spherical ball, uh, because it's very analytically easy to solve such a situation with spherical coordinate system. Wilkes and Bassar, and they did lots of ex uh, work uh, series of papers on numeric and analysis of a pendant droplet case, a drop which is hanging or uh, suspended from uh, on a, uh, a solid rod or a nozzle or whatever. So, and uh, recently there have been series of papers by both you can see uh, uh, lots of papers in which they have 
comprehensively investigated uh, this uh, the phenomena of oscillation of a sessile drop a drop on a substrate and these are the different geometrical modes that they have studied now talking about defining the problem in our work we start with a simple uh, drop uh, with the contact angle theta c pinned on the surface so the contact line is pinned uh, the viscous this it's a very simple case that we started with viscous dissipation is neglected uh, the free surface is assumed to be spherical so uh, gravity is neglected the bond number is very small and the perturbation is uh, infinitesimally small on the free surface delta df um, using linear wave theory uh, nicely given in the book by Leiter. and again the objective is as i said before finding the frequency now introducing to you the system the system is that of uh, uh, the coordinate system that i use is bipolar coordinate system n2d in theory it's called toroidal system containing beta and alpha variables so this is the beta variable in each of the circle beta is constant and has some certain value so beta isoline is given by the red circle and alpha isolines are given by the blue circle and they expand in size and uh, translate the centers uh, translate along either axis so that's uh, so th this is a brief uh, overview of the system but uh, going into detail of it uh, the beta is defined by the angle sub subtended by f1 and f2 uh, uh, foci on the interface and since beta is constant along the interface so you can correlate it with angle theta c contact angle by a simple expression so that helps you to basically quantify uh, uh, contact angle easily with the beta curves uh, the distance from F1 to the point, any general point on the surface is D1 and D2 respectively. So it helps you to find out alpha with this expression. And if you want to perturb the interface uh, slightly, uh, infinitesimally small, then it leads to a competition between inertia and capillary due to surface tension and leads to the uh, modes oscillations. Now, uh, looking into the 3D picture of this uh, situation, you can see here that. Uh, 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 for the drop of contact radius C uh, for an isoline of beta 1 uh, on the isoline of beta circle, uh, if you want to find out distance between A and B, it's you just uh, multiply the scale factor of along alpha times the uh, this, uh, difference between variables alpha 1 and alpha 2. So essentially, H alpha and H beta are the scale factors of the system, just like you have uh, R d theta and R sin theta beta in the spherical system. In a similar way, you have a way to translate from uh, this uh, difference between variables to this distance. So the unit of this is distance. Uh, so it's, it's pretty simple. So uh, and you have also scale factor in the phi direction. So these scale factors will be used in the operators like Laplacian operator divergence and so on later on. So that's why it's good to introduce this operator. But talking about the equations, equations are. Uh, I start with the conservation equation uh, within the drop domain D and no penetration condition, which is on the interface on the substrate where beta is pi and uh, uh, pressure field is uh, basically saying that any gradient of force on the unit volume of the fluid is density of the fluid times velocity. Uh, Euler's equation, very simple for inviscid fluid. And then the most important bit is. The Laplace equation, the Young's Laplace equation, which correlates pressure P with the surface tension using this term, where this corresponds to the curvature of uh, the surface. Now, for a general coordinate system, uh, if you want to find out uh, curvature, then there's this nice uh, derivation given in Mishke's book, and as well as nice uh, uh, notes written by Marcus Desano, in which they have derived uh, curvature for. Uh, any for basically coordinate free system. Uh, so the, I, I probably will give short uh, derivation for uh, for uh, spherical coordinate system. So it's given in Lindau's book and they start with uh, basically uh, saying that any general surface uh, is uh, is uh, perturbed small, uh, slowly and then uh, the one, what one studies is basically the area of the surface as it is perturbed and how it is related to the curvature uh, times the perturbation times the area element. So this is how uh, for a spherical system one gets a curvature which is uh, of the form 
I think I have messed up here, but uh, it is k1 square plus k2 square times nita. Uh, and then there is this uh, operator, which is a generalized form of Laplace operator for any coordinate system. So, uh, so this previous equation is quite, pretty important because we will use differential geometry uh, here as suggested in, in uh, these nodes. Uh, and the whole approach is to start with parametric uh, surface uh, x alpha phi for any uh, for, for the surface with the beta which is not now constant but a function of alpha and phi and then uh, 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 you use one use we use uh, first fundamental form uh, uh, e f and g which basically is the inner product of two tangent vectors on a surface in a three dimension uh, Euclidean space. And then we use second fundamental form L and N, N which corresponds to, uh, which helps you to calculate principal curvature of the surface. And uh, there's a whole history of uh, first and second fundamental form and it's pretty uh, explained everywhere. And then this is the normal vector N to the surface. And then these uh, parameters helps us to calculate the principal curvature K1 and K2 and then in the equation, the young plus equation, we get K1 square plus K2 square, and then a similar way we get the plus world semi operator. So once these operators are defined, then we reduce our problem. Uh, so I forgot to mention dash means dimensional number. Uh, so we resolve the problem to individual components containing eigenfunctions, uh, time, and uh, asymmetric mode uh, L. And then we try to dimension non-dimensionalize the equations first in inside the domain D. So it's pretty simple to use Laplace's equation, but in a variable separated form uh, written down here. And then uh, the no penetration condition on the surface delta ds, and on the on the, on the interface delta df, we have this uh, kinematic free surface condition. And then uh, lambda is the dimensionless frequency. Uh, and the most important bit is. Uh, how one correlate pressure with the curvature and then we uh, uh, get rid of the pressure to just correlate uh, uh, frequency with the curvature containing these uh, two terms this came from the principal curvature and this came from the laplace Volterme operator in an expanded form now the solutions to these equations are uh, i did i followed the ideas from uh, the book by Levitate. Uh, uh, and uh, what one uses is, uh, since in toroidal system, there's a trick to actually make sure that the Laplace equation can be separated into uh, different variables, alpha and phi terms, provided one uses this three factor, which is a function of both alpha and beta. And then once one start with this one, uh, this uh, solution, general solution, then one uses the boundary condition, to find uh, an, a, a, a simplified version of this solution. And then B is equal to zero is assumed because Q, if one follows some complex analysis, then Q tends to infinity as alpha goes to zero. So one has to assume B to be zero. And B, B is I tau, which is given in the book. Uh, it's usually defined so as to make the solution bounded. So I won't go through the these equations because I don't, uh, I'm pretty, uh, I couldn't, see the physical interpretation of them. They might be, but uh, it will take some time. So I will just go through the equation that I derived. And then there was some trick that one has to do here to make sure that uh, uh, the terms are written in this form because this thing equals to v squared minus one by four times p. So this this is kind of a trick steps that helps me uh, to uh, get an analytical form. And similar, uh, uh, Thing was done in spherical case uh, as well. Uh, finally, I get the expression for the frequency, and uh, the expression basically depends on the beta. And just to mention again, beta not dependent uh, is uh, co directly related to the contact angle theta c. So, uh, so yeah, so frequency, which is dimensionless frequency, is dependent on beta not, and uh, the tau is the toroidal mode, the mode that you observe from the front view. And uh, I didn't mention that, but I have written a brief version of P, but P actually is uh, P tau and sub subscript tau and superscript M. Uh, so it has all uh, kinds of uh, combination of modes possible. And uh, here, uh, T alpha is the derivative of T with respect to alpha, 
and same with the uh, alpha alpha double digit. Uh, yeah, I think. And then, uh, yeah, as, as I say here, that P is the short form of this thing. And uh, these are fall under the class of hypergeometric function uh, given in the appendix, uh, will be uploaded, will come out soon in the form of paper. So please feel free to have a look at uh, the, the equation that I use. Uh, so, talking about the results, uh, so this is the first kind of mode that was defined by uh, Bostrick and Stein papers was the zonal mode. So zonal mode is when you have axisymmetric condition when you just view the drop from the front side from front view camera, uh, and uh, 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 the this fluctuations are axisymmetric in nature. And in those cases, you see that as uh, the angle increases, so uh, what we plot here is the dimension as frequency versus contact angle of the drop theta c, and uh, as the angle increases for a fixed uh, uh, contact line, uh, then the frequency decreases. So I forgot to mention that uh, the contact line is assumed fixed in our case, and this is because of the use of toroidal system, F1 and F2 are defined fixed. And uh, as the contact angle increases, the volume increases, so the mass increases, so frequency decreases. And same with, uh, 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 so uh, one of the key thing is that uh, our model at low angles uh, shows a plateau similar to uh, experiments, but experiments are not being done uh, below 40 degrees. And the data is taken from uh, this paper and uh, the, the numerical uh, work by both Street and Stein, it uh, showed a bit of divergence, divergence at, uh, of frequencies at small angles, but there is whole, uh, uh, a, a series of arguments and reasons why it happens, uh, and they have explained it in uh, other papers. Uh, now, uh, talking about other zonal modes, uh, uh, sorry, same zonal mode, but other experiments. Uh, so this is a uh, data for frequency versus mode number. And for higher mode numbers, uh, uh, the, uh, the our model does not cover the entire experimental span, but for the uh, lower mode, our model cover almost good experimental span. In this case, the experiments at higher modes are usually difficult. So that's probably, uh, so for all kinds of droplets, it's not easy to see modes. Uh, so probably that's the reason why the span is limited. Uh, I'm not talking about uh, uh, this uh, uh, paper in uh, this experiment, our model uh, for different angles. Uh, contact angles fall at the lower lowest span of the experiments, and probably that's uh, uh, so. Uh, the thing is, in this case, viscosity in our system, as I mentioned before, uh, is excluded. Uh, there is no dis dissipation that has been assumed. So that's uh, the one of the reasons why our frequencies in this case fall in the lo lower span, and uh, if viscosity is included, which is possible in our case, then uh, the model can be uh, made better. And then later on, uh, there's another kind of mode, which is the sectoral mode when tau is equal to L. Uh, it's non-existmetric as you can see, because L is zero. So just to mention again that L is, uh, uh, L is the same that I wrote in the first few slides as M. If, if, if you remember, I wrote TLM, then, uh, this PKM, I think, then this M is basically L here, just to not have any confusion. So uh, yeah, so in sectoral mode, both of the models, they bracket the data really well. And for the lowest case, more, more case our, uh, our solution actually over predicts at higher angles and at lower angles, it under predicts a bit. And there's some reason why it could happen. So in the next slide, I will explain that. Uh, so this is the mode, which is tessaral mode. So tessaral mode is when uh, tau is not equal to L and uh, again, uh, non axisymmetric case because L is not zero. Uh, again, uh, as you can see for the lowest mode, tau is equal to five and L is equal to three, uh, uh, upper model of over predicts at higher angles. And it's because uh, there's this assumption of pin contact line that we assumed in our case and uh, for the case of lower modes, then usually the contact lines can be mobile. Uh, 
it is expected that uh, if you include the mobility, contact line mobility into the system, then uh, the slope of frequency versus contact angle uh, might uh, not just might but will decrease. Uh, has been reported numerically by people. So uh, so that's sort of the reason that lower modes of a, of a model at high angles uh, doesn't work well. And uh, so brief points on the model. Uh, there are a lot of assumptions that we took. It's a pretty simple model. Uh, uh, so uh, the, the work of our work doesn't consider bulk and contact line dissipation. So uh, bulk dissipation is possible to consider because you just need to include viscosity into momentum equation. And of course, if you include viscosity, then you have to do not just the normal stress balance that I talked before, but also the tangential stress balance because viscosity affects the tangential stress in the interface as well. And uh, talking about the contact line dissipation, uh, it needs one needs to uh, make sure that the contact line endpoints are mobile, which is sort of right now, I'm not completely sure how Toledo model will do that because in that case, F1 and F2 needs to be a function of. Uh, uh, something I think uh, I'm not uh, exactly sure how probably uh, some Hawking condition of uh, these conditions needs to be coupled together with the uh, endpoints of the uh, uh, contact line. So contact line dissipation is something that is sort of difficult with our model to include, but bulk dissipation is easy. And as you can see here, uh, so uh, plotting frequency against contact angle theta c. Uh, uh, our model shown by the blue line uh, uh, goes towards the plateau as to the experiments, uh, and the red uh, line is the Bostic model as I showed before, and uh, it uh, diverges, but the but they include lots of people include viscous and substrate forcing effects because it uh, broads the bandwidth of the predictive frequencies, and as a result. Uh, uh, the plateau is uh, accounted for by viscous viscosity and substrate forcing effects. And uh, we probably need to include these effects to understand how exactly this uh, model uh, would yield uh, after inclusions. And again, uh, the last point is including gravity because we assume the gravity less drop, which is of course, if you have a drop of five to 10 microliters water, then if, but you, if you have higher, uh, drop size then the bonds number which is the ratio of surface tension uh, to gravity uh, or uh, sorry gravity to surface tension will increase and then uh, you will have to account for uh, the shape of the uh, drop which will not be spherical but would be elliptical uh, if it is within this bonds number regime so in that case, probably confocal ellipsoidal column system again in Euclidean space needs to be considered. Uh, but yeah, so that's sort of one thing that I would like to uh, improve or work on uh, for to incorporate higher bonds number cases. So just a concluding comment on the work. Uh, this work uh, was mo mostly uh, uh, focused on using toroidal system because toroidal system as a coordinate system, it is, it comes under the broad class of conformal mapping, because as you can see here, that uh, if we want to find a mapping function from Cartesian system to uh, uh, this system, which is bipolar uh, uh, coordinate system in 2D, uh, then this is the, uh, this is the mapping function that one needs to use, where C is basically this contact radius C. Uh, so this is a very simple map mapping function that can change uh, the grid lines and help you to solve any uh, solve uh, relevant physical problems uh, essentially another example that i just just want to mention about this mapping is by shorts and christopher mapping which was used uh, on a similar problem of water waves of in a in a in a path uh, of uh, good enough height over a variable bottom so when the bottom is uh, not uh, straight but variable then they use Schwartz Christopher mapping, which actually uh, maps unit disk to a polygon, if I'm correct. Uh, then they use this mapping and then later on solved it numerically using the uh, toolbox that's fully available online for this mapping. And 
yeah so so sort of this is the whole domain in which uh, the works fall in conformal mapping and i would be even more interested to work on similar problems with complicated geometries and finding easy functions to solve the problems now acknowledging uh, uh, my funders uh, was funded by Cambridge India Ramanujan Scholarship and Trust as well, uh, and presented this work previously at Droplets Conference. Had a lot of discussions with a uh, lot of people in Durham. Uh, was waiting for more conferences, but couldn't happen. So I hope uh, the real conferences happen soon, uh, so as to have more stimulating discussions. Uh, would like to thank uh, 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 for the discussions, uh, Dr. Rajesh, Dr. Harika and Angkur. And thanks for listening. If you have any questions, please let me know. Thank you. Thank you, Sakshram. A very nice talk and uh, interesting application of toroidal coordinates there. I was worried a little bit, um, if I can ask a first question, um, about the neglect of viscosity, uh, which you mentioned, of course, and admitted. But you then have a fixed contact line, which is presumably uh, associated with non-zero viscosity. Um, I wonder whether you could include viscosity in a, uh, it, presumably it's a boundary layer effect. If you have, a, um, uh, you know, the oscillating droplet, there'll be a boundary layer on the, on the substrate. Um, and at least you could estimate the rate of dissipation in that boundary layer. And I wonder if you've thought of it that way. Uh, I didn't actually thought of it in the boundary layer way because, uh, yeah, so I, uh, I feel like if the angles are very small, uh, if the contact angle is very small, then true that boundary layers will have a significant role to play and uh, uh, could be like the boundary layer effect could be incorporated and essentially viscosity can be incorporated. But I didn't know like how to do this. So I would, I would like to like, I would, I would look at it. Uh, yeah. Uh, Okay, <laughs> we, have, we have a couple more questions here. Uh, here is um, Emma to everyone. How exactly is the mapping function of toroidal coordinate system derived using complex analysis? Um, uh, it's not really a conformal mapping when you're in the axisymmetric system, is it? So it's 2D system because uh, I'm just, uh, so the toroidal system is comes when you, uh, revolve the bipolar coordinate system which I've shown here in 3D dimension in the third direction. So it is actually a conformal mapping in 2D case. Uh, so yeah, I think uh, the answer to how it is derived, um, it's a very nice question I was thinking previously as well. I think uh, probably it has some roots in the uh, Riemann mapping theorem in which uh, you can basically map a unit disk, 2D unit disk, to any general curve, uh, 2D general curve. So, but uh, the point is that Raman mapping theorem does not give you tool how to find that mapping. It just proves that mapping exists. So still I'm looking into like how to derive uh, this function. I got it from a paper, I should have mentioned it, uh, but somehow I forgot the citation. That's but, very much a 2D uh, situation, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. We have another question, Isaac Jackie. Some of your experimental data seem to show a change in behavior, i.e. a kink in the trend. For instance, on slide 18, does your method or model elucidate any underlying cause of these kinks? For instance, a change in dominant terms. Good question. Yeah, so I, I think one of the very interesting thing that with one of the very important thing that will happen at low angles would be, again, as you mentioned, the viscous boundary layer effect. So as the angle decreases, uh, the viscous effects would uh, be predominant. And since we didn't take into account, uh, that is probably the reason why uh, the model is uh, showing uh, this kind of thing uh, at the low angles. So, the viscosity is basically the answer for it. Um, that's a good question. Here's the kink, isn't it? Uh, and uh, yeah, it would be very nice to explain that and to find a, 
some kind of power law behavior for two different regimes. That would be beautiful. Yeah, yeah. 